um, and then we'll begin. All right, so what we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about how to create a, create a winning Facebook or Instagram ad strategy. Can I please ask everyone to put their microphone on mute um, just to make sure we don't have any sound. Thank you so much. Um, so what we're going to discuss today, it's I'm only going to talk about strategy. I'm not going to go into the Facebook ads itself without creating any ads. It's um, I want everyone to understand the strategies behind it, how Facebook works. I did run a two hours workshop before this that we went into um, how to start the audiences and everything else. However, the strategy, um, everyone says you always be, you should always be closing. For me, you should always be strategic, especially when this um, platform changes so rapidly. You as a small business owner have the capability to be nimble and adapt and adjust. There is obviously one process. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to answer this question. Can I grow my audience without paying Facebook ads? I'm going to go through that. I'm going to talk about goals for post, organic post, and goals for paid ads. What I mean by organic post is the normal post that you put, um, put on your feeds, your, normal, your stories, your reels that you do, the thing that you don't pay. They do have a goal as well, and your paid ads have a goal. Getting started with Facebook ads, I'm going to go through how the Facebook ads works, um, not necessarily how to step-by-step step of creating an ad, but getting started before you do any ads. Then I'm going to go through three phases of Facebook advertising. You cannot miss these phases. It is a social advertising. It's not informational. It's not the same way we did advertising on magazines um, uh, that we sort of know of. Because when it comes to advertising, when it comes to the stages of advertising, everybody thinks about marketing and advertising is when you're asking someone for their money, for their time. Advertising starts from the building awareness all the way to asking them for money or time. All right. So quick thing about me, please get connected with me. I would love to get social. I am a big fan of social media um, platforms um, and I would love to connect with you. All right. This could be your question as well. Can I grow my audience without paying for Facebook ads? This has been one of the most common questions. The answer is yes and no, but you still have to exchange something. If it's not dollars, then it's your time. And I do think it is a pay-to-play platform. So there has to be, Facebook did not become a trillion-dollar business by providing a free platform. Most of their revenue comes from advertising. If anybody tells you you don't need to pay for ads, you don't need to spend money in order for you to grow your audiences or build your brand, they're not telling you telling you the truth. Only um, less than 2% of people that follow your page will ever see your post. And that depends if you're posting consistently. And less than 1% of people who actually liked your page, not necessarily chose to follow, liked your page, less than 1% of them will ever, ever see your page. So it's exponentially slower unless you put time into it. Like I said, you have to pay somehow. You either pay with time or you either pay with money. And if you're only concentrating on time, it's obviously going to take away from your business and ultimately you pay the bigger price because you're not spending on building your um, business. And also, Facebook and Instagram and most of the platform have control over the algorithm. It's like having a hose or waiting for the rain. When you have a hose, you have control over it. So maybe, but you need to put time into it. You always have to consider it is a pay-to-play platform. However, though, so when I say, yes, you still have to pay and then you have to consider, then should business owners forget about organic reach altogether? Wouldn't we better off uh, focusing on ads only? The answer is no. They both work together. When it comes to the ads, I'm going to go through the stages with you. 
most of the things, in my experience, it works really well when we combine the organic strategy, meaning providing valuable content on your page, um, mixing it up with the good ad strategy, it works really well. If we only concentrating on the ads alone, you look at it, you look at this platform as an infomercial platform, as what we used to do on TV, which it doesn't work. The ad costs are very expensive. If you just go for the sale, which we call it, um, if you go for the low hanging fruit, similar to when it comes to obviously Google advertising or radio advertising, they're expensive. It's because you're going for the low hanging fruit. So both of them work well together. You have to have an organic strategy as well as advertising strategy. There are two main benefits. I've been doing face, um, Facebook, I've been doing advertising for my business and others for about 20 years now. And been doing Facebook and Instagram advertising since 2014. To me, there are two main benefits when it comes to Facebook ads compared to the other platform. It is still an amazing platform. It's got the most powerful targeting. One of the challenges that as business owners we have is to make sure that we're grabbing people's attention. And you can use this platform to be as specific as you want it to be. So you can target your perfect client based on their demographics, their behavior is that, for example, the birthday coming up, the birthday is not coming up. Are they a friend of someone whose birthday coming up? Their locations, their connections, and their life event. We're talking about the birthday. So there is, it's a very, very good platform. It's an amazing platform. Obviously, they've been around way longer than any other platform. And they, we give so much. The users give so much signals. Um, every do everything you do on Facebook, liking something, sharing something, following a page, they can sit or searching certain videos you watch, how long you watch a video that is classified in Facebook world as signal. So those are the signals we give, and that's where all this information is stored based on user um, user interaction with the platform. Next one is the cost efficiency. The second, and I believe probably one of the most important benefits that I've seen with Facebook ads is being cost effective. Again, again, when I started my business back in 2001, it was if you wanted to advertise, you were against, I think I was against businesses who had money. You either had money, the more money you had, you could spend. You had, you, there was no playing, there was no level playing field. It was the giants against the little ones. You either have, for example, the simplest thing I remember was a community newspaper. And that was, again, that was expensive. You still had to spend money. Even to have, look, I remember with the yellow pages, if you had a bit of money and you wanted to use color, I remember blue, red, and black was the only color you had. To act, and bold was another one, or italic. So to make any little changes, you had to pay. So it was expensive, but here it's very cost efficient. And comparing it, I've got more control as to how much. It all depends. It's not like you have to spend a lot of money. I'm not against a bigger businesses. I can spend as much as I can, and I can have the possibility of being in front of my ideal audiences, which I didn't have. It was just guessing game before. It was either, would they hang out in this magazine? Would they like this publication? Will they be in the community newspaper? Will they ever going to read the community newspaper? So there was so much, there was so much, I think on predictability. So when it comes to Facebook ads, it still has the lowest cost per impression in advertising history. So what I mean by impression, how many times someone sees your ad? Because you've got to remember, even when back then we used to have billboards and like community newspapers, it's all dependent on how many times you're willing to spend and how many times this person going to see your business and see your brand name until when they're ready, they're going to think, oh, I remember that brand. Or in that moment, they're opening that newspaper, they're going to see their brand and say, oh, I need it. So it's still the most cheapest and cost-effective um, cost advertising per thousand impressions. 
So um, the cost between the Facebook and Google advertising, Google, Google Ads has its own price. However, from the cost perspective, WordStream has done a um, study. So what they've done is they've calculated the average cost per click and the cost per action. Cost per click, if they're clicking something, cost per action, for example, if you want them to do something. So they've done a study between on Facebook for 18 different industries, and they found the average um, across all business type for cost per click was $1.72 and $18.68 per conversion, for example, per lead. Comparing it to um, Google Ads, which was about $56.11, it's about three times more um, cheaper than Google Ads. But they are very different. Obviously, Google Ads is very intentional and searchable, and I need something now. I've got a burst pipe. I've got the toilet is blocked. Or, I don't know, I was in a sports practice, and the ball I hit the ball, and, like, the ball got hit my, um, hit my face, and I broke a tooth. So... It's very different. The reason it's more expensive, it has its own place, but the difference is more expensive. You don't have a lot of opportunities. You're going for the low hanging fruit and the chances that it's gonna be more expensive. However, if you are doing Facebook ads and you go, um, and honestly, there has been some people who handed over to freelancers and some people that they call themselves agencies. Their lack of strategy and goal, it's been the biggest challenge that I see people they don't even think about anything when it comes to Facebook ads. Not all Facebook ads are created equally. There is different ads and different objective for different um, clients where they are in the journey and who we're going to talk to because you can put the best offer in front of a wrong audience and we don't want that. And that's what the number two is. We don't know who our audience is. When I ask people, do you know who the audience are? They mainly, it's male or female, it's between that age. Quite frankly, I don't care how old they are. I don't, I want you to tell me this is the pain point and this is what they have. And that's how much my, my services helps them. You need to walk in their shoes. It's so important for you to be crystal clear as to who you're actually serving, who they are. It doesn't need to be one, but you can segment them. When it comes to your offer, your offer is not compelling. We actually don't know how my offer is serving this audience, or we need to make sure it's compelling enough for this person to click a button who wants to talk to us or read a message or read the content or give us their email address. Messaging is another one. We don't know our audience as well. So the messaging we put out there, it's so advertising, so um, informational way that buy from me, I am perfect, we use it as a pitch. Rather than we look at it as to what are we trying to achieve, what message goes well with this audience as, and where they are in their journey. Ad placement is another one. I've seen a lot of people get so clever that they choose the ad placement and bidding method. So what I mean by bidding method is Facebook got a method of auction, which is an amazing, so obviously it depends on um, how much money you give it, but the bidding method. We tend to get clever. We want to do this, we want to do that. The platform itself is clever enough and it knows so much about what we do and how audience works. What I would 100% suggest is to let Facebook decide. So last but not least, I call it after-click process, which is your sales process. We forget that we got to nurture our audiences. We need to nurture people who come through. Not everybody gonna buy from you the first time they get to know your business. Not everybody asks you a question, does it mean I'm ready to buy now? It's your role to create a nurturing process. If they give you a call, if they are seen you, don't be afraid to call them back, do you have any questions? Is there anything else we can do? Is there, by the way, we found this, if they ask you with certain services and products and you know something comes up and it's, it's really complementing your services and it's going to help them and it's going to show you care and you're an authority in your field, send that to them. Don't ever, when they come to you, regardless of what you want to do, when they say, oh, by the way, I'm looking for this information, please don't say, here's the link, go and check it out. Spend time with them. The challenges that we have as marketers and as business owners is to bring in people who are interested and in asking us a question. We cannot say this is what it is. If they want to, they will come to us. It doesn't work that way. 
Sometimes life happens. Sometimes I forget. I need you to be that authority. I need you to nurture me so I can, when I'm ready, hopefully I'll buy from you. But most of it happens, most of the sales happens through the nurturing. It doesn't happen just because you put an ad out and you think, well, it didn't work. Well, what was the goal? And you can't say it didn't work. Unless you take them all the way through and they say, you know what, Lena, I'm not interested to buy from you. That's absolutely fine. But if they ask me a question, for example, to do with Facebook advertising, and if they ask me a question and I send them information, I'm not going to forget about it. I'm going to ask them every now and then, can we do this? Is there any more questions? I'm going to send you those information. I will never give up. And if you give up, that's where you lose that customer. You want to nurture them. You're absolutely, the after-click process is so important. There's been so many times that I've been, even with the clients who come through, that we sit down and have a strategy, and I always ask questions. They say, oh, I want to create leads. I want to bring people in. I want to build my database. And I go, okay, so what is it? we got a lead magnet. We've got to give something freebie. That's great. So what happens? When they sign in, they're going to get a freebie. So what happened next? If they don't open the email, what are you going to do next? Nothing. Every three. After three days, we're going to send them another email. But they haven't opened your first one. What are you going to do next? Like, it's there is so much involved. I want you to think about it. I want you to think what happens. And put yourself in their shoes. If I send, if I request an information and the person says they send it to me, but life happened and I haven't checked my email. And, you know, all of us at inbox, full of emails. And emails after emails and all those spam emails and i've already want your information i've signed up i want to hear from you but because i didn't get a chance it keeps going all the way down but at a day later i want you to send me an email and say by the way did I, we, did, we noticed you haven't opened our emails was there, was there anything missing did you want any information is there anything else don't give up after click person is one of the most important ones oops okay so but you still need to combine an organic strategy with a good paid strategy. All right, so I'm going to talk about goals of organic and paid advertising. Whatever you do, you must think, what are we trying to do? So goals for the organic post, this is what we do, and that's what I recommend you to do. Building an awareness as to who you are, because not everyone knows about you. I always tell people, if McDonald's, if Probably Bunnings. I think if Bunnings still advertises and make sure they're in front of you. I think Bunnings that have a monopoly in Australia, but they're still there. They still want you to, they're still building an awareness. They still want the consideration. They want you to consider it because weekend is coming up and I need to do this, especially the, the advertising goes out towards the week Friday. So there is the it's advertising is not just asking for money advertising is taking people through the process and you have that opportunity you don't need to be bunnings with millions of dollars budget you can absolutely do that yourself one of the biggest goals that we use and i love doing the organic is because it's we find out if it's a right content with the audiences that you have because there's an interaction so then you know i'm actually posting correct audio, um, content i'm posting right core content for my audiences and what we do is we identify the best content that we use in organic then we utilize that on our advertising because we can get better return on my client's investment so everything you post you gotta ask yourself is this a brand awareness am i using this to build my brand who am i is this, for, is this post for people who actually know what I do, what my services and products are, but they're not quite sure if they're ready because they still have some questions. Then you create post and content that's going to help them, like testimonials, your benefits, why they have to buy from you, your experiences and everything. And then we use them and we'll say, okay, this post does really well. Maybe it's time for us to use it in the advertising. So one of the things, you know, if it's doing really well, why would they pay? So the reason I say that is because, again, less than 1% of people will like your page and less than 2% of people will follow your page. You spend all that in, in money, um, you spend all that time to invest to create a great content. The best thing you can use it is to expand it and put it in front of more people who will be interested on in your products and services. So if you don't do that, you're limited. That's why if you're not getting a lot of interaction, it's because 
again, 2018, they changed all the rules. Well, they changed rules every day, but the organic really dropped, dramatically dropped. They said it's got nothing to do with money, but funny enough, I don't know, 10 years, near less than 10 years later, they're a trillion dollar business. But it is still important for you to invest so much. You don't have to invest so much, but it's worth doing. So then we come to the paid advertising. Remember, paid advertising is like a hose. You have control as to what you want to do. You can shut it down and start it anytime you want. But everything we do, it has to have a goal. This becomes really specific. What are we trying to do? We can say, actually, I'm going to try awareness. We're going to keep building awareness. We want to keep bringing people into our funnel. Or are we going to do the consideration? We can say, okay, people are coming through my funnel. They're following my page. They're sending a message. But what are they landing on my website? So I want to retarget them with some consideration. So we want them to make a commitment, either a time commitment um, or send me a message. That is a commitment. You've got to remember when someone sends you a message asking a question, you got to remember they sort of made a little commitment because they they put their hand up and said, I want to know a bit more about your products. And not a lot of people do that. That's the hardest part for the advertising and marketing. The hardest part is for them to get to the point that they're going to talk to you. And then the conversion. Are we going to ask them for a close? Are we going to ask them, is this a nan asking them to buy the product, to book a time, get a quote? Um, book a restaurant, book a photography, whatever, book a session, whatever it is. But you've got to take him through this. So before we do any, um, we take to the next step, I want to be very clear. Your paid ads must achieve, achieve a positive ROIS, which is return on your ad spend. But what I mean by positive, I don't necessarily mean monetary, um, money-wise, because sometimes building your database is positive return on investment because you do have a nurturing sequence in place that you're going to move them to become a paying customers. So you've got to remember it's what are we trying to achieve? And it doesn't necessarily mean money. If you're sending people, if you if your goal is traffic to your website, don't expect sale. What we're doing is you're sending traffic to your website. You're building an awareness. They read the blog post. They check out your your homepage and everything else. That doesn't mean they're going to pay, they're going to book you. If you're going, for example, for lead generation and conversion or catalog sale, then that's a different story. We want transaction. That becomes a different return on your positive return on your ad spend. It's not all about money, but you must have a goal and say, okay, if I've got email addresses coming through, that is still positive on my return on ad spend. Okay. Let's get started with Facebook ads. There's two things I want you to consider. The number one is Facebook Pixel, which is Meta Pixel. It's a code that you put in the heading. And the biggest one is I want you to get yourself familiar with is a Facebook ads policy. So they do have a certain policy, which I would recommend for you to get, um, get yourself familiar with. And if you can spend a couple of months to check it out, it's definitely worth doing it. The reason is when you're creating posts, your organic posts, and all of a sudden you think, I actually want to boost this. I think it's doing really well and I want to boost this. If the copy, for example, the caption or the image, when it comes to ads, there's certain rules applies. So make sure um, the certain industries, make sure you, you are aware of what copy you can or you cannot do, even on your organic. Because let's say this organic posts really well and you decide to use it for advertising and it gets rejected. And you think, oh my God, the copy works really well. But you've got to be very careful when it comes to advertising. Make yourself familiar with Facebook ads policy. It's always been my rule. If you are using their platform, follow their rules. I don't, I don't know why we, we want to um, hack the system or do all of that. There's plenty of people, I call them technicians, um, advertising technicians out there who say we're going to hack the system, I'm going to hack the Facebook. We do not want to hack because the last thing you want, you build your build your community in there and someone get upset and they block you. And they do that anyway. They do keep people out. And it's so hard to get hold of. Okay, so let's get to the Facebook ads. This is my this is my fascination. I find that when people, business owners go to amplify a post or hit a boost button, that sometimes they're not thinking about the overall objective and the goal of what they're trying to accomplish. 
So what happens, I've seen business owners put a post out that might be a branding post and they expect sales. I want you to remember not all Facebook ads are created equally. Here's my biggest tip for business owners. And if you're a marketer, that before you get started on Facebook ads, slow down. This is my biggest tip. Slow down. Go through your audience. What are we trying to achieve? Is my offer compelling for this audience where they are in their journey? I know that Facebook ad is like that shiny object that people just want to jump in because they feel success is on, do you have the sign of that green button if I press publish? Because all of these people, unfortunately, comes and say, I can do this, I'm a ninja, I can do all of this, and if I can press that green button, then I can get all of that money coming in. I want to caution you that jumping into any sort of advertising, unless we are talking about Facebook and Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok, whatever it is, it won't always give you the result that you expect if you haphazardly and without planning do this. So I want you to think about it. Facebook has enough money. Okay, so what I would like you to do is I want you to have a plan and have a goal. Success of your Facebook ads dependent on answering these questions. Simple one, what am I trying to do? Am I trying to build an awareness? Am I trying to build a consideration? Am I trying to build a conversion? What am I trying to achieve with this? What is my budget to spend on this ad? So this has been the biggest question that I get asked. That comes down to understanding your numbers. As a business owner, you must know your numbers. If you're an existing business owner, you can, you should know how your revenue, what you're generating, how much was it cost you to actually bring in a client, a paying client, how many people you went through for that one person become your paying client, how long they last in your sales cycle, how long, how many times they come back to you. So if you are operating, you should know these numbers. If you are not brand new and you're not sure if you're a startup when it comes to social media marketing and advertising you've got to pay two ways you either pay with time or you pay with money so it all depends as to if you are um you have time especially when you're starting you have more time less might be there might be some self liquidating happening but you want you have more time this is when your organic efforts come in. This is where the time comes in that you probably have to spend four to five, six hours maybe per day hanging around on the Facebook groups, creating content, writing blogs, going live, doing stories, doing reels, all of that combined. You get it to the point that you've got this particular post because I've been doing that for the past six months. This kind of post, I've got my content damp packed. I've got my... Um, I know what my audience want, what content, and then you can go here. Okay, now I'm ready to dabble and try Facebook ads. So the startup, it might be a bit difficult, but I still believe you need to have to self-liquidate. That's where your boosting comes in, which is mainly to raise awareness and increase engagement. So what's your budget? This is so important. Do I have another question? I want you to last question. Do I have a rock solid after click or sales processes in place? When I bring people in, what am I going to do next? When I'm asking for their email address, what am I going to do next? When someone asks me a question on my messenger because I've done an ad, what am I going to do? Again, please don't say, here's the link, go and check it out. If you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But please make sure that you're having a conversation. Ask them, you're an expert. What was it that challenged you? What do you need to know? What are you using now? What's happening before? What was the challenges while you're doing this? What was your challenges with, I don't know, your previous supplier? Don't be afraid to ask. Build relationship. Have a nurturing process. Have a rock solid after click process. It's very, very important. All right. Let's go through the three phases. So this is whatever you're doing, you must go through these three phases. So there's an awareness phase, consideration phase, conversion 
face. You must have seen this in fun. So it's exactly the same. And Facebook ads is exactly the same as well. So what I mean by that in awareness, if you are using an ads manager, I'm just going to quickly, actually, I've just done that training. I'm going to show you the ads manager. When you are in the ads manager and you go to create an ad, create a new one. See, awareness, consideration, conversion. So if you are building an awareness and you're working on your top of the funnel, we're going for brand awareness and reach. The post that you're using, it's all going to be about your brand. You cannot ask for sale here and hardly in some of these ones as well. Conversion, definitely. Lead generation, you can do convert. Conversion is the biggest one when we ask for sale. But you've got to take people through this process. You can't just assume or you can't just say, just because I created this ad, it's working. I need to ask for money. You won't. It's, and all of them, and to be honest with you, when they come in, they will drop off. And that's probably why the fun will change. Okay, let's go through this. The thing I've seen is when it comes to advertising, when I tell people, are you doing Facebook ads? They straight away think we talk about conversion and asking for money. It's advertising starts from the awareness stage to the consideration stage, as well as asking for money booking a time. So that's the confusion and the confusion I get. I want you to stay away. And when someone says ads, consider ads is more than just asking for someone for their commitment, either being money or time. There's an awareness stage and consideration. Awareness, which is top of the funnel, and some people call it tofu. Um, so people either, so where are they, where people are, it's either completely unfamiliar with your brand or if they want to go really deep, they're actually unaware that they have a pain point that you can solve or actually needs to be solved. So that's that awareness stage. You're talking to two different people. There are people who might be familiar that they do have that pain point and they're looking for the right person. So you have a different conversation. Or there are people who actually don't know there's, they've got a pain point that needs to be solved. Trust me, there's a lot of people who don't know. So then you create a different content and you build that awareness. You build that awareness, you do that education. That's your awareness stage. We're not even asking them for money. We're building that awareness. These audiences are tend to be called cold awareness. So who are the cold audiences when it comes to your Facebook advertising? They're your saved audiences. So who are or they sort of core audiences? So saved audiences are the audiences that you create. You make educated guesses. You probably, if you've done some Facebook ads, when you're creating an ad, you come to the section that is audience section. And these are educated guesses that you go, okay, they're male or female between this age. They're interested in Netflix. They're interested in this. They're interested on that. Um, th so that is your cold audiences and you can get some and you can or your lookalike audiences. So what lookalike audiences, it's the lookalike from the website visitors or video viewers. So these are cold audiences. The next stage is a consideration stage. So consideration and conversion typically when consumers think advertising. So consideration in particular is a stage where people either familiar with your product or recognize that they have a pain point and are searching for options. Because you've got to remember, we don't straight away go and buy something. Again, if you're a plumber and, um, for example, I don't know, if the toilet um, type first or it's blocked, there's a different story. That's where your Google Ads come. However, when it comes to consideration stage, this is where your product, the people are familiar with your products or recognize that they have a pain point and are searching for the solution. So all the benefits that you talk about on your post, the testimonials that you share, that people happily share that, that is helping them to sort of, that helps them with the research. So that's your consideration stage. These audiences are warm audiences. We consider warm audiences because they either engage with your Facebook page, Instagram page, they viewed your videos, they visited your website or your blog post. So when it comes to ads, you can consider them as your warm audiences. Majority of time, we use website visitors for retargeting. So if you have heard retargeting, 
that's where the retargeting comes. It comes from people who will retarget people who view your video or they visited your website or your blog post. We tend to create, for example, if you are um, posting blog posts and you can tell me actually one of the blogs has been one of the most popular ones. Like, for example, in, for my page, the blog post that I've done, what to post probably about four years ago, what to post on for the veterinarian, um, for the vets on their social platform has been the highest hit. So what we do is we create a special product and we retarget these people because they landed on that page. They've already read my blog post. So they are sort of warm audiences. They're aware, they need help, and they're aware of my um, business. The third one, which is the majority of people, again, they think it's advertising, it's the conversion. So they're familiar with your brand. They know what you do. They know what they're looking for. Now we're ready. We're ready to take the next step. So that is your hot audiences. If in social advertising we go straight to selling, but we're selling to the cold audiences, it never works. So this is where they're ready. They've gone through the awareness phase. They've gone through the consideration. And all they need, a little tiny push to take the next step. So this is obviously the trickiest to master. And a lot of us get it wrong. So who are they? Visited your website. Visited your landing page. Messaged your page. Interacted with lead form opted into your lead magnet they already know about you about your product have the conversation so success of your conversion stage which i said is the hardest stage which is the last one is critical to three components the quality of your targeting you need to make sure that you target the right people and the quality of your ads your copy your images and your offer is talking to that person it's so important obviously it comes down to testing but then ability to track the right result so if you are going for conversion what is considered conversion have they filled out the form is that conversion if the form is not getting filled if people land on your landing page and nothing happens then there is no thank you but they're not landing on the thank you page then we need to go back to the drawing board. So it's very, very important. Rather than saying, no, nah, it didn't work, then you have to go back when you told. So it, it does take a lot of time um, and effort to get it right. So don't think that if someone comes to you, if actually someone comes to you and say, I can do an ad for you and you can make some money, I find it hard to believe because every business is different and also it needs to learn. It's a machine learning. So there's we do a lot of um, ads that it won't work. We test and try. That's why it's very important. Like boosting is very important. Your organic strategy is very important because one of the questions we always ask, do you know what copy works well with your audience? With this particular audience, what images have worked? Um, where would they land? Do you do blog posts? There's so much involved for you to realize to do this. Okay, so these are the three stages that you must take people through. It is, that's the only way social selling works. If you go straight to selling, to conversion, to the cold audiences, it just doesn't work because we don't know you. We don't know who you are and we don't know why we have to give you the money. It's not as easy as it takes time for someone to take their credit card out and pay us. So with the ad strategy, I've created some examples. You are going to get a copy of this. So when it comes to cold audiences, the objective always reach an engagement because we're building an awareness. The audience, you can go with the interest base because these are the people who don't know about your business and what content to create. With warm audiences, we use lead generation, messaging or phone call or traffic to send people to their website for your blog post. Audiences that we use, they either engage with our Facebook and Instagram, they've viewed our videos and visitors. So depending on what we're going to do, the content that we use in products and services benefits, solution that you offer to their problem and testimonials. Then it comes to hot audiences. Hot audiences, they are ready. You have every right to ask for the sign. Don't be afraid when you're taking people because you are actually targeting people who already landed on your visitors landing page visitors. They've already filled out your lead form. They already gave you, if you had a gated content lead magnet, they've already given you the email address. You've already nurtured them through your email marketing. Do not be afraid to ask them to buy. They might not be ready then, 
but you will you will not give up. We still ask them until they say no, we're not ready. Um, we don't want to. Because you gotta remember, like with any customer, there are your you want to have the strategy that you are the right person who provides all this information that they see you as a trusted advisor. So what you are going to get with this training is you are actually going to get a copy of this. This is just an example, and this is just a sample. So you created the amazing conversation, created this as well for us. So you go through the cold audiences, which we explained. Um, as to some examples, if you're going to go into examples, consideration, and your conversion. So you will get this example um, and make sure you have your own strategy when it comes to advertising. And remember, not all ads are created equally. If you click in boost button, you got to remember, boost is only to increase reach and engagement. Facebook took away our organic reach. We used to share a link and your view was high. Now, the 2018, they thought, no, we're going to take that away. They give us a booster button. So that's all it does. It doesn't do conversion. It doesn't do site. It definitely helps to know which content works really well as well. All right, my friends, coming to the end. Thanks for being here and being patient. Do you have any questions? Any questions? <laughs> um, it's hard to know where to start, but uh, not not particularly. Okay, that was really good, though. That's good. That's good. Um, have you do, do you do any advertising, Simon? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay, all right. So what we what well, we probably not for yes. Oh, yeah. Um, so advertising for people to join classes or workshops for, okay. a, you know, fitness, so musical activity. Okay. All right. And so then what happened then? Were you selling something on when they were joining or not? So they, the Facebook ad clicked, linked to a try booking and then the people would buy tickets there. Um, there's some email follow-up when they buy the ticket um, and then I email them after that um, and then they come to the workshop yes. uh, I do try to get them in into a Facebook group for other students who've joined a Tyco drumming session okay. so that I can keep in touch with them that way and they I'm always posting in that group about new sessions coming up or new classes um, so I, yeah I can I don't really have all the stuff that you're talking about and I can see where it could all be improved um but there i've had reasonable success with with getting uh, a lot more ticket sales after actually paying for an ad uh based or versus just the organic yeah it's it's one of the things with organic though like i always said they didn't become a trillion dollar business by giving us a free platform and it used to be really good it used to be much easier and i think they found a way to monetize it. And I know with, um, they've created, like with Instagram, they created a creator um, section, creator marketplace, which they were going to have fees. They were going to charge creators for fees. Um, I think starting end of this year, now they're moving into end of next year. So it is very important to use this platform because I, I do think the group, they can, uh, they've got the group to monetize it. So it's good to, um, Good to have a strategy in place for every part of it. But honestly, Simon, like even the groups are very important. Not all of them work as well. Like they, everything works well together when you have your marketing in place, when you have, it's it's not just one thing you're going to do the work for us anymore. It's, it's a combination of everything. And I know it becomes really frustrating. Like 20 years ago, we thought it was hard. I thought it was hard because there was a lot of um, legwork. But um but now there's so much to consider and there's so much to think about. And um, But the social is just top of the funnel. If you can get their email addresses and build your database because you own those. Facebook cannot come and tell you I'm going to charge you a dollar for your database. So your database is yours, but they can come and charge you for the, having a group, which I think they're eventually going to monetize it. So 
build your database. It's so important, as well as um, using the yep. group. Yeah, great. It's crazy. They, if they make money, they will do it. <laughs> they can never make enough, can they? <laughs> I know, I know. But it's like in January this year, Zuckerberg said, if, you put, if you're putting a link um, and you're expecting organic reach for, me, for people to leave the Facebook ecosystem, it's not going to happen. You either have to pay right. or create a native Na um, native platform by doing videos and sending it to YouTube and you're putting the link there or you're writing a blog and you're putting a link there you want people to leave the platform it's not going to happen unless you're paying so right. if you're doing so that's why that's why it's given us you can do long form videos long form posts you can do so much because they want you to stay yeah because anything outside that platform is owned by Google or Microsoft so Right, yeah. Um, oh, look, there. Yeah. So I, th I think we'll be catching up later anyway. To oh, okay. okay. Uh, I think we're booked in later in July. Oh, wow. Well, okay, not a problem. That's looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Simon. Um, any other questions? Let me see. No. <laughs> All right, so if you don't have any questions, I don't want to hold you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Have a fantastic day and a great weekend. I know it's Friday. Or it's Thursday night, almost Friday. It's almost week. <laughs> Bye right. for now, everybody. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Teddy. Bye.